Let's become comfortable with this environment through a very simple example. Basically, let's model a spring, apply a force, and see the deformation of it. So the first thing I have to do is to come to preprocessor. And there I define the element type. Element type basically determines the physics or the nature of the problem that I want to solve. So if it's a spring, I have to pick a spring element type. If I'm using a beam, beam or if I want to solve a beam, I have to pick the beam element type, so on and so forth. So if I click on element type and pick add, edit, delete, this window will show up. If I click add, you see a list of element types uh, categories on this part of the window. So in order to pick the right element type for a spring, I come down and I to find combination. And spring damper 14 is the element type that I want. So if I click OK, that is selected for me. So just let me uh, show you what that is. Uh, in the help document, you will also become familiar with the help document. It is important to know how to use the help document of ANSYS. So this is the window. If I click, if I find mechanical IPDL and find element types or element references and element library, if I pick combine 14 under element 14 or element libraries, see that it has Combined for 14 has longitudinal or torsional capability for 1D, 2D, and 3D applications. Basically, it can be a spring and a damper, or just a spring, and all of those equations. And there is a list of element types that you can pick in ANSYS. We'll cover these, not all of them, of course, but most of them uh, in our course. So I picked the uh, element type. Now the next thing I want to do is to define the real constants. So what I do in here is I want to define the stiffness of my spring. So I click on real constant and this window shows up. I click add. Combine 14 is my element type and let's see what, what real constants it has. Spring constant, damping coefficient, and everything else. I don't want anything besides the spring constant so I give a um, stiffness of let's say 100 newtons per meter. I click OK and that's done. Uh, the spring element does not have a material property so if I uh, come down here if I look at it see that it does not have material properties besides damping and uh, that which we don't need for this problem yet so I can skip that for this uh, problem and skip uh, jump into creating models. So because this is just a simple spring, I can jump right into creating the nodes and elements. So I create a node, node 1, at location 0, 0, 0, and apply. So node 1 is applied, created there, which we can't see because it's hidden behind the coordinate system. Now let's create node 2 at x equals 1, y and z 0. So you have node 1 and node 2. Now I can create an element between the two through nodes. So create element through nodes. And I can do this. Pick the two nodes of the element. And the spring is created for me. The spring element. Now I want to fix this boundary and apply force on that one. But before I do that, something I want to make sure I want to check is how the spring element is going to behave. So if I come to the element folder or element window, click on options, I see that my element is a 2D longitudinal, 2D or 3D degrees of freedom uh, optional. But I actually want to have one degree of freedom, so UX only. So if I click that, I don't need to change anything else. So I just change the behavior of my element into uh, longitudinal UX. And I can click OK. So what this window does is it's changing the behavior of my element through what is called key options. So if I click OK and go back to the help documentation, go back to uh, combine 14, I see that there are key opt, short for key options for this element type. 
And almost every element type has its own key options determining its behavior. For example, you can have symmetrical uh, elements. You can have, uh, when, it, when you're defining 2D structural elements, you can have plane stress or plane strain that we will cover later. Um, so basically, key options determine the behavior of your element type. So key option two, if I set to 1D longitudinal spring, it only changes or deforms in the X direction. So I have that. Now I can come to uh, loads, define loads, apply structural and displacement on a node, which is this node. Click OK, and you see that I only have one degree of freedom. I pick all. I want to make sure that even velocity is zero at that node, although it's not going to be very important. I put zero and click OK. So you see that displacement in that node is applied. Now I want to apply a force of equal to a thousand newtons on that node two. So if I come here, apply force or moment on node and pick node two. Fx is the only force I can apply. Now let's say a thousand newtons. So the force is also applied and now my model is complete. Very simple model in ANSYS. I can come here and and the under solution I don't need to set anything else. I should just click current LS or current load step and click OK. And within um, a couple of seconds, it should start solving. It says there is a warning. Let's see what the warning is. The warning says the node I and J of element one are not coincident. I don't think it's going to so affect anything. So if I start solving it, it should work. So let's see. If I click on plot and plot control and see the displacements of the nodes in the x direction, I see that the node in here has a 10 meter displacement. So if you remember, the force was 1,000 and stiffness was 100. So x is equal to f over k. 1,000 over 100 would be 10, which is correct. And something else I can do is to come to list and see the nodal uh, solution, deformation or degrees of freedom solution. And x, you see that node 1 is 0 and node two is 10 as we expected. This is a very simple example um, that we covered just to become familiar with ANSYS APDL. The warning message that we saw isn't really that uh, big of a deal. Sometimes uh, some warnings happen that don't affect the solution, but it's always good to make sure that uh, the warning is also taken care of even if they're not uh, that important or that critical.